Hi, I'm Linda Perman from One Big Happy Yarn Co. We want to be your yarn shop no matter where you are. Today I'm excited to tell you all about our nesting baskets crochet along. I'm going to show you what we're going to make, what you'll need to make it, and how to wind your yarn so it's easy to work with. Let's get started! So let's take a look at these baskets. Each kit is going to come with enough yarn to make three baskets in three different sizes that nest together, but they're all constructed the same way, so once you get the techniques, it's easy to make all three. So we're going to start in the bottom center, I'll show you how to do an adjustable ring, and then we'll work in joined rounds to create this smooth bottom. And as we get up to build the sides, we'll start working in spirals, and then we'll add our second color, and I have a cool trick to make that look seamless. Then I'll show you how to make the handles and then we will fasten off and add these adorable little tassels and we'll do a little braid to connect the tassels so that these are actually something that can come off if you want them to but they just give it a fun little look so we have two kits to choose from one is the multicolor kit and you're going to get these three colors so there's the yellow the green and the blue along with a natural color top and they all just sit inside each other really cute like that and then we have another option that is this sapphire blue with a buff top. Again, the same three sizes. We had a mix and match tassel there. And you can just choose whichever one you like based on your decor. So let's take a look at the yarn we'll be using for this project. I've chosen Cascade Nifty Cotton. It's a worsted weight cotton. It's 100% cotton and it's really sturdy and you want something sturdy, not too soft for this project because you want a basket that's gonna stand up and really hold what's inside it. We'll actually be holding a doubled strand throughout so I will show you how to wind this from a hank into a center pull ball to make it easy to have a doubled strand as you go. It is washable. I don't recommend that you block it. I think that it stays sturdier if you aren't throwing it in the wash, but it's good to know because that means you could spot clean it or if you had something spill that you can wash and launder these baskets. So just make sure that you choose a yarn that is uh, a sturdy cotton, a worsted weight cotton, and something that you're going to feel comfortable holding together. This is just a, the best of both worlds. It's soft in your hand, but it's not, um, you know, it's maybe not like garment soft, it's like dishcloth soft. So be looking for something like that. And again, I'm using these four colors to make the multicolored basket. And in the pattern, it will tell you how much you need of each color. But if you're making three colors, you actually want to choose two skeins of the biggest two baskets and then you'll only need one to make the contrast bottom for the smaller baskets. And then I ended up using two skeins of the contrast color to, to fit all three baskets. And each of these skeins has 185 yards on it, so you'll want to pick something comparable. But our kit has everything you need in terms of yarn and pattern, so you'll be good to go if you choose one of these two options. So aside from yarn, we're also going to need a crochet hook. Um, I want to show you the one I like the best. This is a Clover Soft Touch crochet hook. These are my absolute favorite. I've been using them for over 10 years and taught a ton of people to crochet using them. I really like this handle. It's plastic, but it feels warm in your hand. And then you still get the smoothness of the hook. It's a really super smooth. There's no seams or anything like that. It really helps your yarn to glide. And what I really love is that because of this handle, it gives you a good amount of space when you're making your yarn overs to know exactly how to move your hook to get consistent stitches. So I'll talk a little bit more about that as we start crocheting. And I'm using a size 7 or 4.5 millimeter size hook. You need to use whatever size it takes to get gauge, but if you're trying to match my hook size, go for the millimeter size above all else. Sometimes they get weird, the number 7. And again, this is a Clover Soft Touch crochet hook. We'll also need some yarn needles to weave in our ends. I love the Clover Chibi needles. I'm using the jumbo size with the bent tip. Since we are working with the doubled strand of cotton, it can be kind of tricky to get in there, and this bent tip just makes it easy to slide your needle in so you can get your yarn where you want it. And we'll also be using some locking stitch markers. Again, these are locking stitch markers from Clover. You just need the kind that you can insert in and out and that come open and close so that you can remove them. We're going to be using these to keep track of our work and to make sure that we don't accidentally add stitches as we're crocheting in the round. It's something that's really easy to do, but I'll show you how to avoid it. You'll also need just a straight, sturdy ruler to measure your gauge. We're going to work our gauge and then just continue working the pattern right off of the swatch. I know everybody loves that because then you don't have to make a separate swatch, but it's a little bit bigger than four or five inches. And so you need a, a larger ruler so that you can measure and make sure that you're on track with your stitch gauge. 
We're also going to be using a tassel maker tool from Clover. This is a really fun way to make tassels. It's adjustable, so you can change the sizes, which means you can use it on lots of different projects. And I like the way that it constructs the tassel because you actually end up folding it onto itself from this tool, which makes it really easy to insert a braid to connect the two tassels and it, it just give a little more color to your baskets as you're making them. And I'll show you how to do that when we get to that point. The other thing you always need to make great tassels is a really sharp pair of scissors. And I love these patchwork scissors from Clover. They're small and easy to stash in your bag. This little sheath just makes it so you won't accidentally poke anything. And then they're super duper sharp because this cotton yarn is pretty sturdy. So you want something that's gonna cut cleanly so that you won't have to do a ton of trimming. So that's everything we'll need to make these baskets. Next, I'm gonna show you how to wind your yarn. So let's talk about winding yarn and why you want to wind your yarn. So for this project, we're using Cascade Nifty Cotton and it comes in a skein. So when I take the label off, it's actually, when you untwist it, one long loop of yarn. And if you work from it like this, it's, it's gonna be a hassle. So um, the best way to get it from this into a ball, well, there are two ways, but the easiest way is to use what's called a swift and a ball winder. This just makes it easy to take your big loop of yarn and turn it into a yarn cake. And because for this project, we're holding two strands together, you can take the center strand and the outside strand and hold them together easily. So I highly recommend if you don't already have a swift and a winder, um, if you're using yarn shop yarns, you're gonna use it all the time and it just allows you to create a nice tidy ball of yarn that's not gonna roll around on you. And for this project specifically, a ball that's gonna make it easy to hold two strands together. So let's take a look at how that works. Once you have your skein of yarn, you wanna take the time to just look it over and make sure there are no crossed strands here. So there's these places where the yarn is tied and sometimes they get crisscrossed when it gets twisted. You wanna make sure they're all going in the same direction everywhere it's tied so that you don't run into a tangle later. And then from there, you're going to take it and put it on your Swift. The Swift is adjustable, so you can start with it open slightly, but not to the full amount and you just wanna neatly hang it over, making sure nothing is crisscrossing. And then from there, I'm gonna pull it up to where it's taut, but not super tight, but just like comfortably tight so that your yarn doesn't slide off. And then you tighten the key here, and you can see that this is on there. It's not gonna fall down. From there, you're going to go around and cut off all of the ties securing the yarn. So this is the one has lots of strands. This is gonna be the one with the yarn ends. I'm gonna go ahead and pull out the tie itself. And I'm going to end up pulling one of these ends when I start winding the yarn. But there's a couple more places it's tied. It's always a good thing when there's a lot of ties because that means your yarn is less likely to tangle. So just pull out the strands. And then one more. And then I'm just gonna come back to find those ends. And then what I like to do is just pull on one, kind of a full rotation to make sure it's not too tangly. Sometimes there's one that's just easier to wind from. So take that time just to prevent um, any tangles later. So once you have your yarn ready to go, then we're gonna wind it through the ball winder itself. So it has this little corkscrew. I'm just gonna wind my yarn through it. And then I'm coming over top. There are two little slots on the side and I'm gonna put my strand in there like that. I like to leave a little bit hanging down because the first thing I wanna do is make sure that I'm crisscrossing that strand a few times so that this will be handy because I can pull it out at the end and work from the center. So once you have that set up, then you're just gonna start cranking this wheel and get going, so. So I like to run the yarn through my fingers, even though there's a little uh, place for it to run through the winder. This just helps it stay smooth. It's also gonna tell me if there's a knot or anything like that coming up, which is just good to know. Some knots are just a part of working with yarn that's wound this way. You wanna make sure you have a good distance between the swift and the winder so that you have some room for your 
yarn to just unwind itself, relax before it gets wound. And you want to wind at a comfortable pace, not too fast and not too tight because you don't want to stretch your yarn out as you wind it into a ball. So there's a kind of a happy medium. And if you look at my hand, I'm kind of letting it flow through, but I'm not gripping it like this. I'm just kind of letting it flow. And as you wind, if you start to feel some resistance, just check out your swift, see if there's a tangle somewhere. Sometimes there is. Just take the time to loosen it. I always try not to ever take it off the swift um, because usually that just results in a nightmare now that you've taken all the ties off of it. Try to fix it from where it's at. And if you have to, take the ball off the winder and untangle it while it's on the swift because you can always rewind once you've got it. Um, you can rewind it into a kick pretty easily from there. Okay, so as I'm nearing the end, I'm just going to keep going. And when it gets to the end, you're just going to take that end and wrap it around. I usually just kind of tuck it in somewhere around here. And then I like to take the label, pull out my center end, and wrap it around the label. That way, later when I come back to this yarn, I can find it. And as I slide it off with the label in there, that just keeps it from collapsing in on itself while you're storing it because sometimes you're not going to get to it right away. Then when you're ready to work it, again, you can just come and pull out that label and you know that's the center end, so that makes it really nice and tidy. So a lot of times people ask me, well, I don't want to spend the money on both a Swift and a Winder. Which one should I get first? And I always say to go with the Swift because if you have the Swift to spread out the yarn, then it's easy to hand wind a ball from there. If you only have the Winder, there's nothing kind of holding the yarn. You really can't work from the skein uh, without having something holding it open. So I always say go with the Swift first and probably soon after you'll realize like how nice it is to have a Winder. If you're someone who knits and crochets a lot, it's just a super useful tool to have. And and you can really put up your yarn exactly the way you want to so that when you're working with it, it's easy, free flowing, it doesn't roll around, and it's just a comfortable working experience. So if you have any questions about Swifts or winders, feel free to leave them in the comments and I'm happy to help. Next, I want to show you what to do if you don't have a Swift and winder so you can still get this yarn into shape using stuff you already have at home. So now I want to show you one other way to wind yarn if you don't have a Swift or a winder that's just going to make it a little bit easier. Again, we are wanting to have two strands held together for this project, so you're not going to end up with a center pull ball like this one. You'll end up with a hand wound ball, and what we'll do is we'll wind two of them so that you can hold them together as you go. So the first thing you want to do is weigh your yarn. You can use a food scale, or you can go by what's on the label. It actually matches here, three and a half ounces, but sometimes it's a little bit different, and so it's handy to weigh it before you start. So since we have a three and a half ounce skein of yarn, we're going to wind two 1.75 ounce, roughly, balls of yarn. So we'll be able to measure it halfway and, and cut as needed. So I'm just going to unwind the hank just the same way I would for the Swift and take the time to straighten it out and make sure no um, strands are crossed. And you could put this over the back of a chair or somewhere else, but here's just an easy way to use what you have. I just have four canned foods here that I'm going to use just to keep the strands from separating. It doesn't really matter that they're like held down. It just matters that the strands won't get crisscrossed as you start hand winding. And then I'm just going to go ahead and cut each of these ties just like before. Remove the extra. A couple more ties here. And I'll go ahead and start. I hold a few fingers out to get it started and start winding around. And as you're going, these cans are just kind of keeping that hank spread apart so that it doesn't get crisscrossed. Once I get a good amount on my fingers, just slide it off, start winding the other direction. And just in case you're wondering, why does she have those cans there? If I didn't have them, you can just see the yarn will start to come undone here. And it, it's not a big deal, but it will get worse. Um, so this is just an easy way to use what you have. So I'm going to go ahead and keep winding. And then as I wind, I can easily just measure this ball to see I have 0.3 ounces. So I still need 1.4 ounces to make this ball. But that way I can divide the yarn equally in half so I can create a doubled strand as I work. Take your time, and if you t rotate the ball frequently, you're going to get more of a nice round ball. Mm -hmm. 
and it's exactly 1.75. But it's funny because this ball and this amount of yarn, it just looks like there's so much less left on the table. That's why I use the scale so that I can divide it evenly in half because it's just hard to eyeball the two put-ups and get the same amount. So from here, I'll just cut this strand and then I'll wind the other ball the same way and then I can hold both strands together when I crochet my baskets. So that's all you'll need to get started on these baskets with me. Be sure to visit OneBigHappy.com so you can pick your kit color and it comes with a printed pattern too. Next time, I'll show you how to start your baskets with an adjustable ring, we'll work in the round two ways, and I'll show you my tips for staying on track. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you won't miss a stitch and click the bell so you can get notified every time we add a new video. Happy crocheting!